Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Rick, Broadman Baptist Church. This is the Broadman Word for October 3rd, 2022. I hope you're having a marvelous day in the Lord. I know it's going to be a beautiful day around here, beautiful fall day. And so um, I wanted to talk to you, though, about the world that you're going out into uh, because there's a lot there. Uh, the example today is from the book of Acts and uh, what the Apostle Paul did. And um, it's Acts 17. I'm going to start in 17 and um, go through a few verses here, and then we'll we'll talk about it. So it says, uh, beginning in 17, 17. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, as well as marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. A group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to debate with him. Some of them asked, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating for foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Areopagus, where they said to him, Maybe, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears and we would like to know what they mean. All the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. As we can see here, the people of Athens um, were so culturally um, expansive and so seemingly forward-looking and seeking so much knowledge that they had lost uh, reason in the process. I mean, really, um, building uh, an altar, an icon, actually, that's what an icon is, is uh, something um, dedicated to identifying uh, a thing. So they've got this icon to an unknown God. So like, hey, whatever God is out there, we'll go ahead and worship that one too. And um, so the world we live in now is not terribly different. There are so many ideas out there, so many theologies, and so many people trying to be good and not be judgmental or, or not be, um, you know, exclusive to things other than what they believe, that they've lost their reason and their sense because uh, when looked at, uh, these man-made religions and philosophies and theories about life they all eventually fall apart. They're all temporary because they're they're all of men, and they're men with an agenda. However, pure, purely um, altruistic is the big word. However, um, seemingly good or well-intentioned the theory is, there is eventually going to be uh, an angle. There's going to be a bias. There's going to be um, a thought process that you have to buy into. There's going to be something created by men to make you part of this group, and you're going to have to subs subscribe to it. And so uh, reason then begins to come become uh, exclusive to the theory and the theology, um, and then the people who administrate it, basically, the originators or the perpetrators, uh, the promulgators of whatever it is. And it's going to be um, more rigid um, than you perhaps even wanted it to be, uh, even if it's based on not being rigid or trying to woo you from organized religion uh, in Christianity to some other theory, you know, trying to claim that Christianity is just a bunch of rules um, and all these stiff-necked, uh, hard-hearted folks trying to tell everybody what to do. Even those religions are going to have the construct that says you can't believe 
in God or these other things um, because they're bad, they're restrictive, they're constrictive. And in so doing, become restrictive themselves. It's a, what's called a circular argument. Uh, and the wheels fall off as soon as you look at it. So it makes no sense. Um, these theories make no sense. But people engage in them anyway because they don't look past the altar of the unknown God, um, like the people in Athens. And look at what Paul did. He simply went to the places where people would normally be, and normally conduct their business, and normally have their life events. He went to the synagogues. He went to the marketplaces. He went to the public squares and simply preached the good news of Jesus Christ. And in so doing, <clears throat> caught the attention of people. And he was eventually brought to a place where he could then speak to people um, about Jesus Christ uh, in Mas, the, the Areopagus, this, this ruling council. And so because they were curious about what he was saying, they, they saw in him something different <clears throat> and they wanted to know. They wanted to know about this um, theory that he was preaching and speaking about um, all over the place. So I would suggest then that we can do the same thing. If you simply are in the places where people normally conduct their lives, you too, that's why you're there. And you go about yourself as a Christian, you live a Christian life, you example Christianity, you speak differently because you're a Christian um, and you profess Jesus Christ and you um, use gospel as a guide for your life. Um, you are sola scriptura, meaning only scripture, and that's how you make your decisions in life uh, as to what to do or not do, what's good, what's bad. You, you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit as your counselor and your guide, and so you are clearly then um, speaking of a different theology. The world has its gods. Um, even when it's as simple as the individual making themselves the God of their life, to people who are much more theoretical <clears throat> or um, even religious about um, particular pathways and ideas and things, <clears throat> even them you're going to be different from because the gospel or um, theory that you preach has no exclusion. It's for absolutely everybody. It's not from a man or based on a man. The, the Bible was written by God through inspiration of human beings. What a beautiful thing that is. Um, and no matter how inspired a writing may, may sound from a human being, um, if it's not uh, from God, then it's going to be clear The you know, like I said before, the wheels will fall off. There'll be something that happens that you can step back and say, okay, that, that can't be um, true for all human beings. That can't be um, from God. <clears throat> so he's brought to this place, and I would suggest that you would be too. Um, it's probably not going to be something as huge as the Oropagus, um, but you'll be brought into a place, even if it's just one-on-one -on -one with someone, um, the scenario is going to be the same. They're going to be interested or at least curious as to what it is you're saying, what it is, um, what theory it is you're presenting. It may be in a slightly um, larger group, perhaps a group of friends, uh, maybe family members or some sort of social setting. Uh, but in any case, if you are very clearly set apart, different, holy, uh, then you're going to be brought before some form of the Oropagus, excuse me. And in so doing, we'll have the opportunity to show people, to open some doors into what Christianity really is, both through who you are and how you act um, and what you say, to your direct witnessing of the gospel to them one-on-one um, -on -one or in small groups or Hey, if you're lucky, maybe, maybe even a great big one. But the thing is, you don't need to be there on your own. Paul wasn't there speaking words of his own. He was there speaking words from God. 
He was relying on God's power, God's words, God's strength, God's provision, God's um, oversight of his life. And you should too. That way, you don't have fear or anxiety. You will know that this is a thing of God by his will, ordained by him. Um, hopefully, you consecrated it. That just means lifting something up in prayer and making sure it is within the will of God. And then you can move forward throughout your day or whatever event it is, and you can be um, the difference maker. Uh, Bodman is the church that makes a difference. You can be one of its difference makers, but you have to want to do that. You have to take the tactic that Paul took and simply be a, a professed Christian um, in every way in all the places of life where everybody is so that you can be noticed and you can be different before them and then you can be different with them. And then you've opened the door to the gospel to somebody's heart who then God can come in and make the call if he so chooses. I'm not going to choose every time, every person, but that's not our decision to make. Ours is to do the work to open the door. God's is to decide what's right for that individual. So listen, I love you. I hope you have a marvelous day and I'll talk to you next time.